today I would like to give you four different recipes and actually four different ideas. On January, as a team, we went offsite for our yearly plan. And there, because everything was really expensive, we wanted to take our food with us and thank God they allowed us. We prepared some stuff. So at that moment, I thought, oh, Burak, we should share this with our international audience. Why? Because it's something traditionally we do. And I believe it's really healthy. It's almost all of them except köfte, <laughs> all of them are vegan and they're so delicious. Sometimes we go out to the seashores and have small picnics or some small gatherings and all these things, they really go well. And the beautiful thing about these recipes is as they age, meaning if they are not finished the first day, the second day they are tastier, the third day even better. Seventh, not so good, but they can go on for at least five or six days. So what are those recipes that I want to share with you? One is something we all like, a potato salad with refikatach, which has red cabbage in it and a very nice sauce with mustard. Secondly, it's fava. Fava comes from the fava beans and it looks like a pudding. It's very simple, but think of it not as just one dish or a meze, Think of it as a cheap and tasty version of an avocado. Yes, this is something maybe some of you guys won't agree with me, but the feeling that you get and eat, if you like eating an avocado, you would probably 100% like eating fava. Third, kusur is great. It's cracked with bulgur. It's carbs, but it's carbs with low glycemic index, which means it gets through your blood slowly, which doesn't like higher up your blood sugar and let it fall. And it's also incredibly tasty. Fourth one is kuru köfte. We call it dried meatballs. Why? You can eat them cold, you can eat them hot. For example, what I do, I sometimes fry them and then throw them into the refrigerator and I come home really tired and throw like four or five of them to the air fryer and voila, I get my dinner. And it's edible with hand and so, so nice. So kuru köfte, we have four recipes. Now we start with potato salad. Potato salad can be eaten alone or it can be really nice with some schnitzel or some meatballs, a part of steak. They go really, really well. Cut the potatoes in big chunks. If you have a pressure cooker, put them in with cold water and a bit of salt. Close the lid and when the pressure comes to the right time, boil it for 10 minutes. If you don't have a pressure cooker, you can use an ordinary pot. Put cold water, that's really important. Otherwise, the outside will cook faster than the inside and you will have an imbalanced and weird looking potato. Meanwhile, when potatoes are cooking, we can prepare the greens. Start with the spring onions. The white part should be thinner, the green parts could be thicker and cut them into pieces. Also, cut the purple cabbage in slices. Because we were gonna eat it for several days, we didn't put some salt. But normally we put some salt and rub the purple cabbage so that it becomes a little softer. So depending on how long you're gonna eat it, use this or not. On a large bowl, we prepare the dressing or kind of like the sauce. We put the olive oil, a bit of mustard, sweet cayenne pepper, some salt, red flake pepper, black pepper, and mix it really well. When the potatoes are done, take the first heat off and then put them into the sauce so that the potatoes, which are just like kind of fresh out of the hammam, can soak the beautiful sauce. Then we add the purple cabbage and the greens and mix and it's really ready to serve. Now, fava. If you haven't eaten it, please, please try it for me. It is one of the ultimate comfort foods that I have. If you have a problem in your stomach, it's also really good for that as well. And in the Antakya region where we had our earthquake, there's a version of it and it's called beton. Beton is concrete. Why? They sometimes eat it in the morning. It fills your stomach so much. It stays there like concrete for a long time, making you not hungry for long. So, try fava. We put the dried fava beans, onion, some salt and water to the pressure cooker, or it could be to an ordinary pot. The amount of water that you can put when you make it in an ordinary pot is three finger higher than the level of 
fava beans. In the pressure cooker, it's gonna take about 10 minutes. On this normal stove top, about a half an hour. Cook them until they're really soft. Then add some sugar, mix it great, some olive oil and put it into the blender. You're gonna have the consistency of a thick soup. That's what we want. Get a big tray, spread some olive oil in it and pour the mixture. Let it cool down in the room temperature and then refrigerate. After four hours, the fava should be set. Set meaning in a good hard tofu-like consistency. Because we were going to a meeting outside, we didn't take it off the tray. But normally what we do is, with the end of the knife, we make sure that we go through the edges of the fava so that it can be moved easily. Then we get a flat plate, something like a slate, and put it on and then twist it and maybe have a few taps at the bottom of the tray and we take it out and then cut in whatever shape we like. It could be triangles, it could be baklava shape, it could be anything you like. We prefer sometimes squares. People love it with some onions and dill together. but some olive oil on top fresh, always good. And I love the taste of the plain fava so much, just the olive oil would do. Now we have a little fancy version of a kusser with pomegranates. On the channel, we have the basic one, and this is a twist. And it will give you an idea of how different kind of twists that we can make. We have our fine bulgur. To that, we add some warm water and some salt. On another bowl, we put tomato puree, pepper puree, olive oil, pomegranate molasses, salt, and black pepper and some cumin. When the bulgurs really grow big, mix the sauce and the bulgurs together with a lot of netting. The pressure of your hands will make it easier for the sauce to get into bulgur. To the mixture, add some spring onions and some mint and some parsley and add some nice pomegranate seeds with pomegranate water. Mix them really well. It's ready to serve and when we're eating, we eat it with a bit of lettuce and we use it as a wrap to eat kusur and it's delicious. Or you can carve a pomegranate and put the kusur inside and use it as a nice plate. Kuru köfte, which is dried meatballs. They look dry, but when once you taste them, you won't forget the taste. First, we need the mincemeat. Mincemeat could be from the wheel or the lamb. I usually prefer the wheel. We add some grated onions, eggs, cumin, black pepper, our famous meatball spice mixture, salt, olive oil, and we net them well. For the meatball spice mixture, we have a video that I have done. But if you say, Rafika, I can't find the energy in myself to make all that mixture. We have it in here like this, smelling incredibly well. It's also sold on Etsy. You just don't have to use it just on meatballs. You can use it on chicken. You can use it on some vegetables to have like to spice it up a bit. So nice. For the meatball, netting is really, really important. When we net it well, we make a better köfte. All the tastes get into one another, make something else than a mixture of minced meat and some spices. Add some parsley and net a little more. Shape them like fingers, but in the middle, a little thicker. Originally, it's deep fried, so you can deep fry it, or you can use an air fryer. It's going to be also good. It's ready to eat, and when you are ready, you can serve it with a yogurt sauce. What I do like, put some tahini, a little bit of lemon juice to the mixture of yogurt and tahini, and mix it really well, and on top, some red peppers or sumac again, and it becomes a really nice dip sauce with a spicy köfte and this light yogurt gives it a really nice balance. Thank you guys for watching us until so far. It has always been a great pleasure sharing what we have with you. It's also a great way for us to heal. And I want to thank again, the last time I checked, it was 64,000 
dollars on the fund that we are trying to raise for the earthquake survivors. We are so, so, so delightful for it and hope everything's gonna go better each day. Take care.